um, 60 ohms. Now, you can try and check it with a voltmeter just by putting the voltmeter across the brushes. But bear in mind that if those rings are corroded in any way, you're going to get a resistance that's a bit higher than you expect. We'll just try. I've got 84, 84, a little bit of, um, yeah, a little, well, there's a little bit of resistance in the wires, and obviously there's be a little bit in the brush. It's the only way to really check pro absolutely properly is to have some things that bent over a bit, some probes that bent over a bit and get straight on the slip rings. But 85, that's fine. That's telling me there's not a problem there. Um, if you were getting 20 ohms or or you know, or one ohm or so, then you've definitely got a problem with the rotor. But around about 60 ohms, 80 ohms, that's fine. There's no problem with that rotor. Okay, the next thing that we want to um, to check is the windings. Now there's you've got two windings that are connecting onto this connection block here. Now that's one winding, 110 volt winding, that's another 110 volt winding. And that will connect up to the switch at the front for the changeover between 110 and 240 and it connects them up in different ways to get the two different voltages. So to check, the, the and this is the, this is the state of windings, the main windings on the state. So to check those, what we have to do is undo, because it's got to be connected. It's got to be disconnected to check it, otherwise you're checking everything through the, uh, the changeover switch, which is no good. So just undo those, those, um, those connections. And make sure you, uh, you cover the nuts and washers. those wires off there and out of the way. Now you'll see it's, the colours are marked on here, so you won't get you won't get mixed up. Okay, well with it like that, basically what we're going to be looking for with our voltmeter set to resistance, I'm trying to jam behind it, we're looking for this winding and this winding to both have the same resistance value of about probably about 0 0.7 ohm or something. No, they go 0 0.6, 0 0.5, something like that. And this one, 0.6.5, so they're both the same. And the crucial thing is there must be no resistor, I mean, there must be no connectivity at all between these two centre ones. So it shows that, 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 that the, um, the windings are isolated from each other. Okay, so there's nothing there. So that's a dead, you know, it's um, completely, they're completely isolated from each other, which is what we want. We don't want to get any kind of resistance reading any kind of connection between these two windings there. Okay, that's all fine. And if you want to be a real purist, you could just check each one to earth to make sure there's no shorts down to earth. And, uh, and that's, that's about that part of it done. So, and if you did have, uh, you know, if you were getting a reading between these two, it's a sure sign that you're, you've got a problem with the stator. Uh, and similarly, if the two values weren't the same, it would be telling you you've got a problem with the, uh, with the state. So that's, that's about, um, that's, a, that's, that's, that, that side of it tested as it were. Now, I'm just going to put it, put it all back together and the, uh, connect up the, um, uh, the main outputs again. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to find out and show you how to test if there is a problem with the AVR. Now, the AVR itself is it's kind of a bit of a difficult thing to test directly. So what we do is we substitute the AVR. What the AVR does is it puts DC voltage onto these brushes. So the way that we're going to indirectly test the AVR, as it were, is that we're going to put voltage onto those brushes from the battery. Now, if you've got a machine that had no output and uh, 
and you've done all these other tests, and then you put, disconnect the AVR, and put voltage directly onto the brushes. If you then get some output, now putting it from a, from a battery, from a 12 volt battery, it's not going to be the right output, um, it's not going to be the right voltage, is it where it might be 100 volts, might be whatever, but the main thing, uh, the main thing is that if when you do that, you get output, then it's telling you that the AVR must be done, because the AVR, if it was putting bolts into those brushes, you would be getting output. So, what, that's what we're going to do next. Now, because I <coughs> quite a lot of this, and I think you'll find that this is technically called uh, flashing the field, what we're about to do, but uh, I just do the test in the AVR because flashing the field sounds like some kind of pervert football match. But uh, we'll just, what we need to do is, uh, can we just zoom out a minute, Pen? Okay, you probably can't see. Down here I've got a battery. I've got the negative side of the battery connected and the other connection there, I've just left it floating, okay? So, and I'm going to put these, these I've got terminals on, I'm just going to put them to the brushes. So the positive side there, the negative side there, make sure you get them the right way around. Now that's all connected to the, um, to the brushes and the battery, but the one side of the battery is left unconnected. Uh, now, what should happen, I'll start the machine up, and when I touch the positive side on, on the uh, machine, it will, should be, if the, uh, you know, if the problem is with the AVR and everything else is working properly, when I touch this positive terminal, I should get some output. Now, <clears throat> I've got this connected up to a load bank. Can we just zoom up, up a bit, Ken? Move up. So, okay, so uh, okay, on, the, on the monitor there, let's see. Here, uh, you can see my oscilloscope. That'll do, Ken, that'll do. And uh, when I start the machine and I touch the, uh, the, uh, the battery terminal on, you should see the oscilloscope suddenly sprint the life. So I'm just going to start out, I'm going to do this very briefly because uh, although we've got the extractor on, it's not pleasant to be in with this one, so... Uh, right, looking at the oscilloscope then, I'm about to... Uh, yeah, okay, I'm about to just touch this on the battery. You probably might even hear the note change. Now, if when you do that, you get no, you still get no output, then you know you wouldn't uh, necessarily um, suspect that the AVR was at fault then, because uh, you've done the job of the AVR and still got no output. So you're, you're, you're looking elsewhere. But if when you do that, you get output, then that's pointing you towards the AVR as being the uh, the guilty party. Now, the thing to remember, if you're going to do any of this. Is if you're doing this to a machine with no output, you've got no idea why it's got no output, and there could be all sorts of shorts and strange things going on in the alternator, which means that anything could be coming out of that wire that you're putting on the battery. So, you only want to dab it on, you want to make sure you're insulated from any of these connections, because it's possible, in, you know, I suppose in some kind of way, that you could end up with um, AC volts coming down that wire if you've got the, the necessary conjunction of faults in your um, in your generator. So just be aware when you turn this with a generator that's got a fault, absolutely anything can be coming out of that wire so you're not really be killing yourself with it. And um, yeah and that just about concludes the basic fault finding tests that we'll do on a on an EX5500. With that combination we should be able to determine whether the problems with the stator the AVR or the rover. Okay, thanks very much.